Number three, two, three, two. <laughs> numbers, with numbers, man. Uh, and this is from YouTube. Um, anyway, it says, hey, I love the reviews. I was wondering if you know of a cigar that could be my regular cheap cigar. Cheap spelled with two weeks. Uh, me and my college buddies <laughs> like to get together and play some poker and smoke a couple of good cigars. It's finally my turn to buy the smokes, but I don't want to break the bank. I've seen that Cigar of International has a couple of bundles of 50 for 50 bucks, but I'm afraid they, these will, will be garbage and end up as a gift to somebody I don't like for Easter or whatever the next holiday is. I personally prefer uh, a cigar that keeps you interested in slash changes, mild, smooth, a little and a little sweet. Also, my old man loves Rocky Patel, Connecticut, and the Perdomo Reserve Champagne, but not the price of 75 plus per box of 20. Any suggestions for me and my buddies and some, <laughs> and some cheap? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerry sounds like he's ready to go on this one. Uh, go, go ahead and grab this, Jerry. Cheap! Uh, cheap, cheap. No, uh... <laughs> Some uh, cheap alternative cigars. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the first one I would go with. Uh, it, it sounds like his uh, his flavor profile is a little more towards my what I kind of like. Um, but I, I, I would say the uh, the famous uh, famous Dominican 2000s that I reviewed a while back. Uh, those are definitely definitely. I wouldn't. I, I, you know, saying they're cheap cigars is kind of an insult to them. They're not cheap. They're affordable, economical, but they're anything. But cheap when you factor in the price, the quality, the flavors. Uh, I think that's a that's a that's a great bargain cigar, not a cheap cigar. It's a bargain cigar. Um, also, uh, another one I would recommend is there's the uh, the one made by Arturo Fuente, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's unbanded. Uh, it comes in curly head. yeah the curly head, not the deluxe, yeah. but the regular curly head. Those are great. I took those on a on a bachelor party uh, last year. Or a year before that, a few years ago, I can't remember when. But uh, and you know, and introduced them to guys who don't normally smoke cigars all the time like we do, and they were uh, a, a huge, huge hit. And I, I think they're pretty affordable as well. For I, th I think they come in a box of thirty. I'm, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think boxes of thirty, and they run run around the fifty dollar mark. I can't imagine they're more than that. But uh, those are again, you know, great tasting cigars at, at an affordable price. Uh, those would be uh, two of my uh, uh, recommendations for a, a bargain cigar there. Uh, Walt, you've done a lot of research here. You've done a lot of reviews on bargain cigars. What, uh, what's your uh, expert opinion on this? Well, uh, you know, his, his, his uh, flavor profile type or, or the, the, his preferred body being mild, um, it, it really doesn't fall into the... I don't know that that arena of cigars that I typically look for. Uh, one of the suggestions that I would make is the uh, the Florida Oliva Gold. Um, they are said to be mild. I think they're more mild medium. Uh, there's a heavy uh, Nicaraguan spice about them, which may or may not turn him off. Uh, if he likes the Perdomo Reserve Champagnes, they're going to be sort of similar in the sense that they both have that Nicaraguan zing to them. So uh, you can pick up the Florida Oliva Golds for about thirty-five dollars for a bundle of uh, twenty-five. They're very affordable. Um, TNT Cigars also carries this, uh, I think they're, they're called uh, Havana Sunrise. They're mild cigars. They run about $40 a box of 20. Um, you can also go the route of the Perdomo Frescos. Now they're going to be medium. Again, they're going to have that Nicaraguan spice to them. Um, and they run, I think, about $35 a bundle. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a there's a large variety of uh, in, inexpensive cigars out there, and you definitely want to go the inexpensive route, not the cheap route. Uh, I think a lot of times if you buy these bundles of fifty, four fifty, you go you do go the cheap route. You get uh, poorly constructed cigars that really don't do anything for you. Uh, and at least that's been my experience with them. I've ordered you know the cigars international bundles of fifty, and you know it, it, I've never really had any that that I cared for, and I always end up putting them in the mucho door, giving them away. To uh, to people that don't cigar smoke cigars very often, uh, the uh, the Arturo Fuente Curly Head is a is a good example of a good solid cigar that is very inexpensive. Um, if you head over to uh, I think it's in the Stogie Spotlight section, you uh, you go through some older pages there. You'll be able to find uh, the bargain cigar breakdowns that I've done over the past two years. 
Uh, I typically do them around Christmas time, and the whole goal is to find cigars that will cost you under three dollars per single ship, and uh, and that that is my you know bargain area. So you. you <laughs> Uh, at any rate, uh, if you head over to the the Bargain Cigar Breakdown area, you'll be able to find a variety of cigars. Another one that I just that I just thought of is the uh, the Padron Londres Maduro. Again, medium bodied cigar, nice rich flavors. It's not mild, but it'll run you about forty dollars a box, and uh, you are you're getting the Padron name and the Padron quality out of uh, out of a Bargain Cigar there. But uh, that's what I got. Uh, Brian, why don't you fill us in on your uh, your opinions of Bargain Cigars? Well, I've had uh, a few of the, the Tampa Sweetheart cigars, and they're they're very good and they're affordable. And I think the reason that they they end up being so inexpensive because they're rolled by uh, apprentice rollers for uh, Arturo Fuente. So you get the, uh, the you get very similar quality cigar that you would from uh, Arturo Fuente, but you get it at a, at a very inexpensive price. So you really can't complain about uh, about that cigar. It's it's a good solid cigar for the money. Definitely a great recommendation. I completely forgot all about them. Hey, I had a quick question here for Walt, uh, or Brian, if you know it too. Uh, but I was wondering, you know, you mentioned how the, these Tampa Sweethearts are rolled by apprentice rollers. Are, there, are those the only cigars that you know of that are advertised like that, that are advertised that they're rolled by uh, beginner rollers? Um, you know what, I've heard of uh, another company doing it, but I can't think of who they were off the top of my head. Um, I, I know that uh, Fuente makes a big deal that, that those cigars are not seconds. They are premium tobacco and whatnot. Um, I, I think it's different tobacco than you'll get in the Chateau and stuff like that, but uh, they're, they're blended to be extremely similar and, uh, and the idea is to train these rollers. So, you know, I'm sure other companies do it, but I, I just can't think of one off the top of my head who uses apprentice rollers. I, I know they're out there. I, I've, I've seen them before. I just I'm struggling to remember who they were. Brian, do you have any idea who uh, who also might do that? Well, you know, just one other thing that came to mind real quick. The the um, you know, if if this is like your uh, your typical poker game where you're breaking out the drinks and uh, you're having a good time, and and by the end of the night you're you know you're feeling pretty good. You know, those fifty dollar bundles might not be so bad. The, the first couple might be a little rough, but you know, if you're just looking to smoke something while you're you're getting your drink on, you know, the, your, uh, that $50 bundle might not be a bad idea. Um, you know, I, I don't know, but if you're if you're not really drinking too much and, and you're keeping your wits about you, you, you probably want to kind of move more towards uh, the recommendations that we've made and, and maybe stay away from those, uh, those $50 bundles, or the, the 50 for 50 deals. But anyway, Jerry, what were you saying? No, I was just going to close out the question there, but that, that's, uh, that's, a good, that's a good advice. You know, start off with a good cigar, you know, and then once you get some, uh, some liquor in you, you know, you won't be tasting or feeling anything anyway, so it doesn't really matter what you're going to smoke <laughs> once that alcohol kicks in there. But uh, Maverick, you know, oh, go ahead. You know, I can attest to the chisel. I had one yesterday, and I felt kind of out of body. It was kind of like an out-of-body experience. I just felt like my mind went totally numb. And I just didn't know what was going on. I just felt like in a complete, utter daze. So uh, you know, that's a, that might be a way to go there, Maverick. If you if you if you need a little some uh, some beer money, you know, you get some off your friends, give them a chisel, and uh, they'll be off their game for sure. So Maverick, but you know, we gave you some great recommendations there. Both Brian and Walt had some uh, had some good uh, good suggestions for affordable cigars that won't break the bank. And uh, you know, let us know how. Uh, how it turns out, you know, we, that's one thing that we don't really have much of with the YQMA. We don't really get much updates on how, we you know, when we answer questions, how, uh, on how they do, you know, once they talk to us, once they get our answer. So, uh, you know, be sure to give us an update there, Maverick. But uh, moving on, and I'll, I'll read question five. I haven't done much reading here uh, this time around. So uh, question five comes from Big Dog Twenty uh, via via YouTube. Uh, and uh, Big Dog wants to know, he says, hey, I recently viewed your full video where you were talking about the shot glass method uh, of adding humidity to your humidor. Uh, after you leave the shot glass with distilled water inside the humidor for 48 hours, is it ready to store the cigars? Uh, do you have to remove the shot glass and close the humidor for another 48 hours? So, Brian, uh, 
I'm going to shoot this over to you first. I don't know how much experience you have with breaking in humidors, uh, seasoning humidors, I should say. Uh, but uh, once, you, once after that 48-hour method, uh, are you ready to, uh, are they ready to store your cigars? Well, I think that uh, the 48 hours might be a little bit low. Uh, the whole idea is to get the wood hydrated uh, and let it to begin uh, holding humidity for you. Um, once the wood starts holding the humidity, whether it's 48 hours, 72 hours, you know, a couple of days, uh, once you take the shock of ice out of there, I wouldn't worry about it so much. I'd start loading it up with cigars. Uh, what happens is, when you have an empty humidor, it begins to dry out because there's no, there's no buffer in there to hold the, 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 hold the humidity, which is why you get a, a truer reading when you have cigars inside the humidor. When it's, say, 75-80% full, you've got all that tobacco mass in there that's holding the humidity. The, the humidor itself is holding humidity. So uh, you've got less chance of it drying out. Now, if you close the lid and you, and you let it sit a couple of days empty, you know, I think that you're just going to get some leaking and, and it's going to begin to dry out. So once you feel that it's stable and everything is up to snuff, uh, by all means, get your cigars in there and, uh, and get everything you know, sort of working together to hold the humidity for you. Jerry, I know that you, uh, you were the one that did the, the video on winterizing your humidor, so uh, what do you think? Yeah, that was me. You know, I'm not the most technical person. I probably just read that 48 hours uh, thing from someplace else. And uh, <laughs> that's why I'm not known as the uh, the technical expert of the Stogie Review. But um, I don't know. I mean, if I said in the video that after the 48 hours you're good to go, then, you know, I guess in my opinion, it's good to go. You know, I've, you know I think when I did this, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think when I did this, uh, uh, I wasn't really doing a new humidor. I was just going through the motions. I, it wasn't a new humidor that needed to be seasoned. Um, uh, but I, I, if I remember correctly, uh, I did have a hygrometer in there uh, and I think I left it in there 48 hours and at that time it read 7070 and uh, that's why I uh, I thought uh, it was good enough to take out and, and start store, storing cigars. But uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to defer here to, to, to Walt and Brian. They're more they're more technical than I am. I don't know the science behind it or, or anything like that. I just read directions and, <laughs> and go from there. So, uh, 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 so, so, you know, listen to what, uh, to what Brian and, and Walt had to say about that. And, uh, I, I think when you, when you listen to Brian and Walt, you can't go wrong. Whereas me, it's kind of, kind of iffy. Uh, I could lead you down the wrong path. So <laughs> trust in Walt and Brian. That's my motto. All right, all right. So hopefully that helps you out there, Big Dog Twenty. Uh, you know, Walt's the man. He won't lead you wrong, like we, like Brian and I say. Uh, our next question is a uh, is a voicemail question from uh, from David, and uh, we're gonna listen to David here and uh, see what his question is, and uh, we'll come back and uh, and uh, see if we can answer it. Hi guys, uh, my name is David and I'd like to submit a question for your questions, my answers. Okay, this is my question. If you were stuck on a deserted island and you could only have three things with you, what would they be? Okay. Um, for me, I take Cigars International Cigar Warehouse, uh, a moonshine setup, and pray that you can make moonshine out of coconuts, and Kate Beckinsale. So that, those would be my three things. What would yours be? Okay. Um, welcome back, Jerry. Walt. Brian, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, keep it up. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Well, that was David. And, uh, well, as far as what I would bring on a deserted island, well, you know, I like to watch uh, Survivor Man, uh, Les Stroud. And, you know, he does these commercials for these, like, GPS phones, these satellite phones. Uh, I think the uh, first thing I would bring is a uh, satellite phone so I could get help. Um, second, I don't know, maybe some, some cigars and uh, hope I could, you know, spark it lit on a rock. And, uh, I don't know, third thing, maybe some, some comfort stuff, uh, a hammock, <laughs> I don't know, so I can just wait for people to come get me. I, uh, I certainly wouldn't want to wait and, or, you know, just be stranded and, and be there forever. I mean, obviously, your moonshine kit's going to run out at some point unless, you're, uh, unless you've got an endless supply of coconuts. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. The first thing I think of is, you know, how am I going to get off this island? Not, uh, not what's going to make me comfortable on this island. So, th those would be my three things. You know, uh, <clears throat> a way to get off the island via satellite phone of some sort, um, a hammock, 
to uh, to get away from the crabs and bugs and whatnot. And uh, you know, a nice box of cigars. I know I didn't give this too much thought. I, I'm sure you wanted me to take this into this fun, you know, you know fun, exciting direction. But uh, that's what Jerry and Brian are for. So Jerry, <laughs> why don't you you kick us off? All right, my three things. Now, now, now David. He talked about how uh, his three things would be the Cigars International Warehouse, right? Jessica Beale and uh, what was it? A distillery, uh, right? Was that it? Or something? Yeah, yeah distill thing. All right. So my three. Uh, well, shit. I was gonna say the first, the first half hour of the Jessica Alba movie, Into the Blue, but then I'd have to bring a DVD player and a, a TV with me. Said. So takes up all of that shit so <laughs> uh uh on a cigar side i would take uh you know a bundle of the la flor, Demi la flor dominicana cameroons uh i'd have to find a way to cut them and light them but that's neither here nor there uh that's what rocks are for. yeah that's what rocks are for um uh you know, I, I god I, I don't know I, I would just i guess just the the, the cigars and I would hope that, however, whatever mode of transportation I, that I was using to, that I found myself stranded on a deserted island, I, I, I would just hope Jessica Alba is on that plane, pre-pregnancy Jessica Alba, that is, 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 on a, is on a plane with me. And, I mean, really, I, I'd die a happy man with just those two things. I, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's kind of near heaven, Jessica Alba, cigars. I mean, what more, uh, what more can you ask for? I mean, after a couple of days, neither one of us are going to look all that great and, uh, we're gonna wish we were dead anyway. So, <laughs> so I don't know. That's the best I could do. Uh, 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 let's turn it over to the mouth of the south uh, over there, Brian. <laughs> Let, let's let's set the record straight. Nobody will be looking for you. They'd all be looking for Jessica Alba. <laughs> Nobody will be looking for any of us. Right. Hope you got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to add? Anybody think of anything else? Want to replace their one of their three things with something else? Yeah, I, I guess to be more specific on those cigars, I think I'd bring a, a box of VSGs. Either a box of VSGs or a box of uh, Padilla 1932s. I, I really like both of them cigars. So it'd be a real treat to have a, an entire box at my disposal and a lot of free time. Oh, all right. Well, David, uh, uh, hopefully that was uh, entertaining for you. I think, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think Jessica Biel's hot, but, uh, you know, come on. Did he say Jessica Biel or did he say somebody else? He said somebody else, didn't he? Probably. I can't remember well, what he, he said. He said Biel. I, I was thinking Alba. Uh, I just went off of memory. One of those. No, you know, I think, it was, I think it was somebody else. Because I remember, I remember giving him a hard time about it. A hard time about it. And I, anyways. Uh, we, we did just play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we suck so bad. <laughs> we suck. We suck. Anyways, this is why we need a production break right about now. Oh no, let's let's catch up on our cigars first. <laughs> Brian, how is your uh, Camacho El Legendario treating you? Yeah, in the flavor department, mine's doing pretty much the same. I'm getting a little bit of that spiciness in the back of the throat, nice woody flavor. It's a nice, rich, flavorful cigar, and no complaints in the flavor department. Um, the ash, it doesn't hold on very long. I actually dropped an ash on my my favorite mouse pad here and burned a hole in it. As you can, well, the mouse pad is full of ash anyway, but I did manage to burn a hole in it, which kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, uh, I'm going to end up picking at it, and next thing I know, I'm going to need another mouse pad. But... That's neither here nor there, Jerry. What do you think of your uh, Camacho El Legendario? Well, you know, I'm uh, I'm plugging away at it uh, about a little past the halfway point, and you know, it's still burning uh, pretty strong. Not having any of the the burn issues that Brian Hewitt uh, 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 talked about there a little bit, but uh, uh, flavor wise, you know, I, I'm not getting that woodsy note that you guys are talking about. So maybe I'm uh, I'm missing out here. I'm still getting mostly a, a predominant uh, uh, creamy flavor, a little bit of the the uh, a pepperiness on the back uh, on the back side here, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it, it's definitely a, a solid cigar that uh, I'm definitely enjoying, and uh, I, I I think it's in that medium body uh, uh, medium body range in my opinion. Um, but 
all in all, it's uh, it's going pretty uh, pretty well for me. Um, so, uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna I think that that brings us to our our, our second production break, and uh, we're gonna continue smoking and talking offline and doing production break stuff. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we'll come back with uh, with segment three, and uh, so we'll see you on the flip side. Hang tight.